Hello everyone, welcome back. And today we're going to go through GitHub Copilot, which is an AI powered coding assistant pair programmer that's here to supposedly revolutionize the way that we write code. So GitHub Copilot is built on a large language model that is associated with ChatGPT. It uses GitHub as a training ground. So it uses a lot of the code that's on GitHub as part of its training, meaning that popular languages such as Java, C++, or JavaScript will behave better and have better results. It also predicts the next lines of code that you write. So very much like a lot of the generative AI tools out there, basically predicts the next line and gives you suggestions in that manner. So it generally works better with languages that don't have a million ways of doing the same thing. So in this video, I'd like to go over the workflow and not really give my opinion on the tool, but for that, please take a look at my blog in the description below. So at the time of this recording, Copilot is available for a limited trial and is free for students and teachers. So the process of the verification of that is about five days or so. Uh, in this video, I'm also going to test another tool, which is the chat feature. And that is currently in test beta. And that verification process takes about a week. So let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing we need to do is navigate to our GitHub account. We need to go down to settings. And in the settings bar, you'll see a billings and plans tab and we go to plans and usage if we scroll down a little bit here we'll find github copilot we need to enable github copilot and it will ask us to get access to it so we'll just click through these options the first option here is asking us whether or not we want to have public code as part of the suggestions i'm going to allow it and the second part of this is to allow GitHub to use my code snippets for product improvements. This is going to allow the code that we write to train the model for GitHub Copilot. So I'm going to allow it. And once we click save and get started, that will be the end of the process. Okay, so we're in Visual Studio Code here. And the first thing we wanna do is install the extensions. So we'll go to the extensions tab and we're going to look for GitHub Copilot. And it should be the first one on the list. We should make sure that the author is GitHub and we're going to install it. And once it's installed, you should be able to see that there is an icon here, which is a Copilot icon. This is the second time I'm installing this. So the first time you install this, you will have to click through a bunch of verifications. Uh, the second thing that I want to look up here is the GitHub Copilot chat. And that should be this one right here, so GitHub Copilot chat. And again, as I said, the verification process of this test beta is gonna take about a week or so. So I just received the verification. So I'm going to install this. And once we install this, we should see an icon corresponding to chat over here. So those two are the tools that I want to test for this demo. So I'm gonna jump back to the file here. I have a folder called Copilot server, and I just want to create a simple server here just to maybe take in a CSV file and uh, to see if uh, it can maybe spit out a JSON object for me. So the first thing we'll do is we'll do a server.js. Uh, I've seen videos where if you provide more information on let's say what the csv file looks like and what the schema looks like and so on that you may get better results but i'm just going to try this straight up and see if it gives me a good result here all right so i'm going to give it a prompt and the prompt is usually in the form of a comment so i'm just going to write an express server rest api that has an endpoint you'll see that as i start typing this there's some suggestions that it will give us as well so this is actually pretty cool um, so we'll do a process csv um, and uh, that accepts a csv file and returns a json object corresponding to the fields in the CSV file. All right, this seems like a lot of typing for me, so I hope this is going to be worth it. So use as few packages as possible. Okay, I'm not sure if this will be actually a good prompt or not. This is actually the first time I'm trying this. So right away, uh, after we do two line breaks, uh, it'll tell us that there are some suggestions here uh, already. So this looks like a good start because we're we're creating an express server. Uh, it's going to use Malter, not use Malter before, uh, but I don't think we need this package. But anyways, we'll continue on. Uh, CSV 
to JSON, sure, that seems like it's a good package to use. We're going to need the file system. We're going to need to create an app. And notice that all of these are just suggestions that are coming from Copilot right now. Okay, I'm going to make a port 3000. Good. Um, we're going to create an object for Multer. Looks like the destination is uploads here. Okay, that looks okay. Um, so sometimes it does take two end of line characters for it to continue on. There's a kind of a bias there in terms of the number of lines that we're using. Uh, app.post process single CSV. That looks correct. The suggestion here is that we have uh, this thing that we need to do. This seems like if I take a look quickly at the Malter website. So it does seem like this is very similar to what the Malter website is telling you how to use this. So this is a good start. So it also gives you the suggestion for the rest of this. We're using the CSV to JSON. And this looks like some boilerplate code that comes from that package as well. So there are some uh, suggestions here. So we can do tab to accept. And uh, if this is a harder problem, there might be multiple ways to solve this. So this looks like a good solution. Uh, I'm going to do an app.listen. And I think that's really all we need. OK, so I guess we do need a little bit of knowledge of how to use Node and uh, npm. So we're going to have to do an npm install here of these packages. So we'll do an uh, ex install express malter as well as CSV to JSON. And I think that's all we need. So I'm going to install those packages. Looks OK. So we're going to run nodemon on the server. And let's see if this works. So we're 3000. Uh, I'm going to jump over to Postman. And I've set up an endpoint here already, which is a post, uh, which is a process dash CSV. Just going to double check that that endpoint is correct. So uh, process CSV, and uh, I've already uploaded a uh, a users .csv file. So I'm going to send the request over, and let's see what we get here. Okay, that looks pretty good, right? That's that's a good endpoint. All right, so this is. Uh, so I, I basically didn't do any of this. I've not used Malter before, but it seems like this is just code copied from the package uh, definition. So maybe we can try one more endpoint here. Uh, let's see how it performs on just giving it instructions on writing an endpoint. So here we want to write an endpoint, a, a post endpoint um, to receive a username and password and verifies verifies them against the database. OK, so let's see how this performs. All right, good. We still have an app.post login. And uh, we're going to have a few sig Oh, actually, request.body. OK, that's good. Um, password, good. And then we're going to query the database for username and password. And oh, OK, so these are, if username and passwords match, then return true, else return false. Mm hmm. OK, I guess so. Uh, and we're going to just tap through our this. OK, so we do, do need to fill in a little bit of code here. It doesn't allow us to be able to connect to a database. So maybe maybe I should prompt it a little bit up here. Uh, connect to a database. Um, oh, let's do a Postgres database. Um, and we'll do username is Postgres and maybe password is wd and um, database sure we'll do test all right um connect to a postgres database with the following credentials right with that okay does not look like it's doing what i want maybe i can prompt it a little bit here we'll do const pg is equal to okay and okay so we need to prompt it a little bit um, and is it going to do this for me? No, it's not going to do this for me. And I don't know how the PG client works. So let's jump over to, let's see how PG works here. Okay, so let's jump over to uh, PG package for node. Okay, so probably the best way to do this is through the um, through the environment variables. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we can. We will need a client. OK, so it looks like we're going to need something like this. And then we can do client.connect. OK, that's pretty good. 
Um, and so down here we can work with our database. All right, um, I think uh, there's one other thing that it's missing. Uh, so let's see if when we go into the login, let's see if it actually, we do a console.log uh, username and password. Okay, good. That's a good prediction of what I actually want to do. Uh, so, so I'm going to save this and I'm going to see if this endpoint actually works. So we'll do a nodemon server and it's not working here. Um, what is going on? Oh, module not found. I have not installed PG. So npm install PG and let's see if that works. All right. So we'll go back to port 3000. Let's go to um, postman again and let's do a post request for localhost 3000 and slash login uh, we're going to give it a body um, let's give it some let's give it a json object here we are looking for username and password so we'll do we'll pass in username pc and password We'll do uh, PWD. Okay. So let's send it. And we are getting error, cannot read properties. And uh, if we take a look at what we get here, cannot read undefined username. All right. So it's not even console logging the username and password. And I think the reason is because we didn't add something to the app. I think we need to app dot use um we need to well no we don't need that uh, app dot use yes we need to understand json and we also need to understand url encoded i think that would be the problem all right so let's restart the server and let's send this over again and now it's not giving me anything okay oh yes good so it's sending, it's uh, printing that. It's not getting any response because I have not actually written out any response. All right. So this is actually pretty good. Um, I'm actually quite impressed with how much it gives us and uh, how little writing I have to actually do here. But it actually takes a little bit of understanding of the code and the framework that you're using in order to make it work. So if I have no experience in Node right now, I wouldn't have been able to create this as quickly as, as uh, we have been doing it here. Uh, but uh, connecting to a database, I think there's uh, some problems with that. Well, mostly because we needed the environment variables. Uh, but let's say I wanted to actually uh, include all of that code in the client. It actually wasn't able to give me that. So that's a really small gripe, I guess. Um, all right. So actually, the next thing I want to do is take a look at the chat feature. So if I jump over to the chat, I believe the way that we can ask uh, the chat is we can do slash commands. So we can do slash explain. Uh, so slash explain. Oh, great. So we have some code here. And slash explain just gives me all of the outputs of, or the explanation of what is going on in the code here. So the code above is snippet from Node.js. It starts by setting up some middleware using Express Framework and includes a public directory. Yes, it does. And the next part of the code defines a post endpoint for process dash CSV. Great. So it's good. Cursor is on line 44. That's awesome. And overall, this code sets up a server with two post endpoints. The first endpoint converts CSV to JSON object. The second endpoint receives a username and password and assigns them to variables. That's, that is exactly what's happening. So this is actually really good um, of explaining a code. Um, let's see if I have something a little bit more complex here that I can bring in. All right, so I just brought in an SIO file. This is a socket IO file that I do uh, demos on, I guess, in uh, the class. So let's take a look at what this is doing. So maybe I can maybe highlight a part of this and hopefully it'll explain to me what is happening here. So I'll go to the chat and again, I will do an explain. I wonder if this works. Okay, the code snippet is a snippet from Node.js file that uses Socket.io library to handle real time. Okay, so when a new connection is established, the code increments the clients. Yes, it does. And it emits a client change event to the socket client. Yes, it does. And all of this seems pretty, pretty accurate. Uh, so if nothing more, this is really good for working with maybe like client code or code that somebody else has written. Um, the code also sets up a listener 
for the chat event, which is emitted when a client sends a chat message. When a chat event is received, the code emits. That's pretty good. Yes. All right. So um, I guess a lot more testing will have to be done here on more elaborate uh, programs. But so far for a startup uh, application, it's actually saved a lot of time uh, setting up the server and, um, and writing some of the functionality. So maybe the last thing I want to uh, take a look at here is let's say that I'm on this server. Let's go back to the previous server that we had. And um, let's say that we, yeah, let's say we didn't have this part here because this was, this was missing from the server before. And let's say here, let's just give a response.json. And I'm just going to send back success true. Mm -hmm. Let's see, not success true. Maybe send back the actual username and password. This is not a good idea, but let's just send that back. And let's say there is a problem here. Maybe I will even prompt it um, by saying uh, does not respond correctly. All right, so let's see if there's anything that that Copilot can do to fix this. Oh, propose a fix for the problem in the selected code. Oh, okay. So um, does not, sorry, um, response does not send body data correctly. All right, the code selected is a post endpoint at login that executes the username and password to be sent back to the request body. The code extracts the username. Currently, the response sends a JSON object with the username and password as key value pairs. However, this is not correct response for a login endpoint. Mm, yeah, I guess you're right, um, but that's not really what I'm after. Uh, maybe I really haven't given it a good enough prompt. So the the suggestion that it sends back is user exists. Well, yeah, that is in essence what we want to build. So this is actually a pretty good suggestion for this endpoint. Um, but it really hasn't it really hasn't uh, got to the root of the problem, which is it's not really receiving the username and password properly. So we'll do a slash fix again, and uh, maybe we'll give it the whole. Uh, the whole server and we'll say again uh, the body data is not is uh, we'll say undefined okay, maybe body data for the login endpoint is undefined all right so let's see if it gives me anything else excellent all right so it says we should use a body parser and we should include URL encode, uh, URL encoded and uh, the body parser.json, which is essentially what we did earlier there. So let's see, we go back. That is exactly what we did. Uh, well, except for this static part. Um, that's good. All right. So it does eventually give us a response for the uh, for what's wrong. Uh, we need to, I guess, provide it better prompts. And I have no experience on this, so forgive me. Uh, but I think this is a really good tool, especially if you are in probably second year, second, third year, fourth year. Uh, this I don't think this would be a good tool for uh, starting up just because uh, it doesn't really teach you how to program uh, from the basics. So a lot of the syntax in the earlier courses, we might find it helpful to actually remember some of the syntax. But once we're familiar with the framework, I think this is a really good tool. All right, so I hope this has been helpful. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see everybody next time.